What's going on guys, Jimmo here again with a little number on texturing uh, plastic or anything really. And what we have here is a bumper that we're going to be texturing the lower half of because we had to do some repairs on it. Even though it was a new cover, there were some defects and I'm going to need to retexture it. Now, since this is raw plastic, you'd have to check out my other videos on preparing and painting plastic. What I have on there right now is a plastic primer and we are ready now to add our texturing product. Now this job didn't go as smoothly as I would have liked it to, but that's alright. I can kind of show you guys if uh, things don't go right. There's a few little workarounds. And the biggest part of my problem is since I used the bottom of this can up and then I had to start a new can. What happens with the new cans is they start kind of spraying chunks. So, you know, you shake the heck out of them and you spray it off for 30 seconds hoping that you've gotten rid of any chunks that are going to fly out of there. And then bam, you go to texture your bumper and boom it just doesn't uh, doesn't land the way you want it to and you can change the texture up a little bit depending on how you spray it and if you want like a lighter texture I'll show you um, when I remove the bigger chunks you can actually sand this stuff down a little bit and uh, change the texture somewhat the texturing product I'm using is from SEM just called a texture spray and I haven't used a ton of texture products I've used I think one other I can't remember who made it but it was absolutely terrible uh, I found this one to be the best one that I've come across. But if anyone knows of a good texturing product, let me know because I'd be kind of curious to hear what else is out there. So I'm going to zoom in here and hopefully you can see the chunks. They're kind of on the right side. They're kind of all over. Um, just big balls of, uh, I guess, rubber that fly out and land there and kind of take away from your nice consistent textured look. So it's not a big deal. I'm going to just let that dry. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Then I'll sand it down and then I'll reapply. So what I'm going to sand it down here with is some 800 grit sandpaper. So I'm actually only going to sand over the areas where the chunks are and I can kind of fan it out afterwards and do like a little texture blend and it's going to look pretty good. Actually the stuff sands really well. It actually sands uh, better than most primers so it's, uh, it's not as bad as you might think. And I hope you guys have been enjoying my Morgan Freeman-like narration skills. Um, I'm probably going to be staying off camera a little bit longer till I get caught up on all of these clips because I want to make sure that uh, I can get this information out to you so you can use it. And uh, hopefully I'll be back to taking questions and all that kind of stuff in the not-too-distant future. So now I'm just going to reapply my texturing spray in that area to cover that all back up and texturize it. And we're pretty well done. I'm going to wait about 15 to 20 minutes for it to flash off. And as you can see, it's not really that difficult. But I guess if you've never seen it before, you probably wouldn't know that. So the next thing with these textured plastics is sometimes they can be a bit of a pain to find a color code for so you get the proper color. Uh, usually I have to go to the books and kind of find something that corresponds with the paint code and make sure I pull a chip out and eyeball it and make sure I have it right. But uh, I think... I think this actually, this took two tries. I sprayed out the wrong color first before I got the proper color on this. And then uh, basically you apply it just like any other paint. And now I know some guys will say they've, I've heard this a lot actually, people will just simply put a hardener into the base and leave it. However, that's not really the best way to do it. It's not the right way to do it because it doesn't have any UV protection in the paint. So it can chalk up and and look improper. So what you need to be doing is putting a flat clear. Most of the textured products you're going to find a call for a flat finish because otherwise a glossy texture just looks pretty weird. So you uh, you apply one to well, actually usually two to three coats of clear just like anything else. It'll go on glossy but once it dries it'll have a nice even matte look to it. So here I am just putting on the flat clear that look before, like uh, like I say, people will just leave it in base coat with hardener. It actually looks like it's flat once the base coat dries without the shine because the clear coat is what gives it a shine, unless, of course, you're using a flat or semi-gloss clear, and then it has less shine, like this case. But you'll see it goes on shiny here, and then after, well, it depends actually on the, on the product you're using and uh, the speed of it. So... I've had some that'll go matte uh, instantly almost like within 15 minutes as they flash off they go matte. This one here usually takes uh, a few hours but you can see that's what it looks like when it's shiny and a shiny texture doesn't look quite right. So it's going to gradually start to become dull and matte and even 
as it dries. And some products are better than others here. This one here is the DuPont version. I've had some that were just absolutely terrible. I have done some other matte colors. You can check out some other videos. It might be of more use when you're trying to pick a matte clear. But this is what we ended up with. Like I say, it'll go a little bit more dull as it dries. And here is what uh, we're trying to match on the original, the back bumper. You can see it's kind of an older vehicle, so it's dulled down quite a bit. But uh, we got a good color match. We got a good texture match. I am very happy with it. So that is going to be it for this time, guys. Thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more. Later.